Welcome everyone. I'm Nancy Bronstein, and today I'm going to be talking about the new features in the MySonet embroidery software. Now, MySonet has not been out all that long, but in the past year or so, there have been seven different releases or improvements to the software. I'm going to start with the very latest, latest release and go over some of the things that I think are interesting that have been changed and improved. And then as time permits, I'll work my way back and we'll see what we can cover. First, I'd like to though show you where you can figure out what has changed. The software is so powerful and there's so many different features. Sometimes when there's a new and improved version, it's hard to, to really see what changed. And if you're curious, I'll show you how you can do that. So I'm going to share my screen. Bear with me a moment here. And the way you would find out what the changes were in the latest version is you go to mysonet.com, then you click on tools, then download where you would download a version of the software. And then if you scroll down, you go to release notes. And here's the notes on each of the different uh, releases that came out, the improvements that they made, and in case you're curious. Uh, and today, for sure, I am going to go over, um, where is it? It's on here somewhere. Name changer is on here somewhere, because I think that was a really good addition to the software. And uh, we're going to cover that in just a minute. Um, but first, what I want to do is open up the software and show you some of the new super designs that were added in. There are 126 new designs that were added in, and the super designs are available to all the different levels. If you have silver, if you have gold, if you have platinum, the super designs are available there. So in the super design category, if you go up to your toolbar at the top and you click on super designs, then you go to emojis. There's this new category of these fun emojis that we're all familiar with from our devices. And these are particularly, I think, good for kids. You know, they like these emojis and um, there's all sorts of things that you can do with them. And then the second category of new um, super designs is under home and there's some new sewing um, super designs which I, I really like and all of the super designs that were added were all added in two different versions so here's the pin cushion version in full color then you can also go over to select style and click on line and then you get this kind of line drawing, which is kind of cool for certain applications. I kind of sometimes I like it better this version than the colored version. It all depends on how you're going to use it. So I'm going to get rid of these. So currently I am working one-handed because my cat jumped in my lap. I thought I had her locked up. So we're, I'm gonna, we're going to hope that she is not disruptive. So the third version uh, or the third group of new super designs are in sports. So in sports, if you go over to category of sports, then over to this area next to select style and click on the down arrow, you'll get down to the bottom where we have these um, tennis super designs. I kind of like this crazy one here. I don't know what I'd use them for, but I like them. So let's get rid of him. And uh, then, you know, these things can be used for a lot of um, different projects. Um, you could say, pick this guy playing tennis and make him a line drawing and maybe a little bit smaller. And apply. So we've got this guy here. And then I could go over to encore and make a frame and i don't want all the guys going the same direction i want them to alternate because i like the way it looks then so some will be facing left some will be facing right and then i'm going to go to this icon which will make a border around my hoop and then click on preview and i've got this nice border for some sports related uh, wall hanging or 
all sorts of things you could do with that. I just, I like it when the guys are facing each other playing tennis like that. So those are the uh, new super designs. And I'm just gonna flip back for a moment to see, make sure I don't have any questions on what I've done so far. Let's see here. And okay, so I, there was a little problem with my, my photo being, there's something being large and the screen you're sharing is small, but I guess that was adjusted. and. And so we're okay, but now we've got this crazy reiterative screen here. So I'm gonna go back to the MySonet software and go to a blank screen and show you Name Changer. So the latest new function is Name Changer, which is really um, very convenient, clever new um, feature. Name changer is you would use that when you want to make a project where you're going to make multiple, um, make the same thing multiple times with different names. And I'll show you what I mean here. Um, let me change my camera here. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. And so this is a picture of my hoop where I made these um, napkin rings for Thanksgiving. And in the uh, digitizing module, I just made a square and then I plopped down a super design and then I put everybody's name and it made multiple iterations of the same um, napkin ring very, very quickly. And I'll show you how you do that in the software. And here's another version that I'm making um, for a class that I'm gonna be doing on Passover and table decor. So this is a name, um, a place card for our Passover Seder that um, could, it doesn't hold a napkin, or I might make this version where it's actually a napkin holder. But you can see how I had this central design of the uh, star and then added the person's name and I can quickly make multiple versions of that all on the in the same hoop or in, in just a few hoops. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen and go back to the my Sonet program and show you how you would use the um, name changer function. Okay, so now I am um, in the Platinum version. Uh, the name changer is available in the Platinum version and I believe maybe the gold version, but not in the silver. So I am going to, um, first of all, just pull out a super design. Maybe I'll get one of those emojis so you can see what they look like and make kind of a name tag maybe. Let's uh, pull this guy out. Make this a little bit smaller. So I got this uh, cool dude here. Then I go into my letters and find a font that I like. Uh, maybe we'll just pick this one and, and type in my name. And then if I wanted to, I could go over <clears throat> and make my name curvy, which I might as well do here. And uh, let's see what we have as far as that's a pretty good size. I'm gonna uh, increase the gap to make the letters a little bit further apart. I generally like that, the way that looks. Now I'm gonna check apply and then move that over. And so that could be a name tag. Now, if I wanted to make a dozen of these for a group of people, you know, everybody with a different name, what I would do is click on my name here over in the film strip on the left, then go to name changer. And oh, my embroidery is not in the hoop, so we got to bring this down. Even though I've got a big hoop here. So I'm going to click on my name again, go to name changer, and now this new screen pops up. And this is where I put everybody's name. So I've got Nancy. I'll put Larry, I'm going to use all my family names, Shana, Jacob, 
Rachel. There's more, but let's just stop here. I think that's probably enough for our purposes. Then I click on export. And then I can choose the format that I want this file to be saved in. If I have a Viking or FOF, I'm going to want the um, VP3 or 4 file to be saved as that file. But our software can work on just about any embroidery machine. So depending upon your type of embroidery machine, if you have a different brand, then you're going to pick a different file format. But we're going to stick with VP3. And I'm going to click OK. And then what happens is it's going to go to wherever you've been, you've last saved your designs. Like here's my Passover designs that I saved with family names. But we're going to call this um, maybe emoji and click on save. Now, if I go back into those files, um, my designs, I've got all these files, each one a different design with this smiley um, guy super design with these names underneath them. So now I have all of these. So I can um, load any of these and I could do them all on one hoop if the hoop was large enough. And um, this is a really huge hoop that I was playing around with here to make to design a quilt. So let's go into a more reasonably sized hoop that makes this look normal. Okay, so the 360 by 200 uh, hoop. So I could go in and insert all of those files, those all those emoji files, and do all of those name tags all at once. So I'm going to hop back into my um, stop screen sharing to see if there's any questions, because I cannot see the question file while I'm in sharing. Oh, you are seeing. Now you're seeing me. So. Um, no questions? OK. So that's the name changer, which is a lot of fun to use and certainly saves you a lot of time if you want to make multiples of anything. Um, place card um, designs, napkin holders, um, wedding table, seating, those things that you get when you go to a wedding and you uh, it has your table number on it, um, gift cards, all sorts of things where you can make it a very nice card and make multiples, multiples of them very quickly. OK, so that's Name Changer. Um, another thing that was added with this last version is they added another language. I thought it would you know, be kind of interesting for people to know how many languages that MySonet is now in. And they added Portuguese. So now MySonet is available in Chinese, Danish, Dutch, English, Finnish, German, Italian, Norwegian, Russian, Spanish, Swedish, Turkish, and Portuguese. So um, I think it's pretty amazing that there are people doing, have it, like they have a love for embroidery like we do all over the world using our software. So that just is uh, really interesting to me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to go back a couple of different um, editions or uh, releases and uh, go back and talk a little bit about WordSculpt. Now, WordSculpt has been in our software for a long, long time, but there are some new added features in the Platinum version of the MySonet software. So I'm going to um, share my screen again and go back into the software. OK, so here we are in the software again. I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. And um, if you want to do WordSculpt, they actually should probably have shown you a little example of what WordSculpt is first. That's what I meant to do. So let's go back here. So WordSculpt is this central um, part of this table runner is a pumpkin that is a WordSculpt. And um, with WordSculpt, what you do is you choose a shape. You know, this is a pumpkin. And then you choose words to go on the inside of the pumpkin. Maybe I can make this bigger so you can see. There we go. So that's a, a WordSculpt design. 
And previously, there were many, many dozens of shapes that you could choose, which there still are, if not more. But now you can actually edit shapes or create your own. So that's a new um, addition to the program. Now, a lot of people don't think about the fact that with WordSculpt, you have all these different shapes and you can choose what stitch the shape is made out of. Like this is a satin stitch. You could choose um, another decorative stitch. You could choose a triple stitch. And you could use these shapes for a lot of different purposes. Um, they don't necessarily have to be a word sculpt. Like you could use this shape just because you want a pumpkin. And what I did with this table runner is I had the pumpkin in the center. And then on the sides, when I went to quilt them, I just uh, created a bunch of little pumpkins in word sculpt with a triple stitch and then quilted that onto the other part of the table runner. So word sculpt's a really fun program because of all those shapes that are in there. And I'll show you what I mean, because I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so I have a question here. I assume none of these features are in the gold version since it's not a subscription model. Can you confirm? Um, I'm pretty sure that Name Changer is in the gold version. And I actually have the ability to uh, switch versions in my within the software. So I'll do that right now to confirm that Name Changer is in the gold version. Also, all of the uh, super designs are in are in the gold version and the silver version. So all those things are in there. What's what's not in the silver version is name changer. Word sculpt is in silver, gold, and platinum. However, uh, the ability to edit the word sculpt shape, the shape itself, is just in platinum. So now I'm going to share my screen and and uh, demo these things we've been talking about. Okay, so I'm now in uh, platinum. I'm gonna switch to gold so I can see about name changer before we move ahead. So this is not something that you can do in your software. You buy a certain version and that's what you have. This is an educator version. So um, that's why I can choose the demo mode. Okay, so let's see here. So I'm going to um, pick my hoop size, get out of this huge hoop. And I just want to make sure that I'm A, I am in gold now. So if I go to letter and I type in my name and apply that, and so name changer is grayed out. So you do need platinum to, in order to use name changer, but you do have all of these different, um, super, all the new super designs that I talked about and the ability to have them in, um, you know, just a line form or um, in the full colored version. Um, now you also will have word sculpt here. The wizard, and this where I'm still in gold, the gold version, and you have probably hundreds of different shapes that you can utilize. However, the these two buttons are grayed out in gold. When you can use all of the different shapes, but you can't edit the shape. Well, you have to go up to the platinum version in order to edit them. But there are so many shapes. And you are you have the ability to make them smaller and, and larger. You just can't, um, you couldn't change this to a foot with six toes, for instance. Um, I don't know why you'd want to, but you, you, you need platinum to be able to do that. So I am now going to close out of this and go to the platinum version so that I can demo how you could um, change your shapes and word sculpt. So I have to go back to demo and open up platinum. And it does, there is a little bit of a lag, like 30 seconds or so before it comes. Here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go and open up 
a new screen and choose a nice large hoop, 360 by 260. So I have lots of room to work. And then I'm going to go up to Super Design. No, not Super Design. I'm going to go to Create and go to Word Sculpt. And now we have, um, you know, these two icons are now no longer grayed out because I'm in the Platinum version, which means that I can, with this icon, I can edit an existing design. And with this icon, I could create a design on my own. So I'm going to go in here and choose a design to edit because that's probably generally what I would do because why reinvent the wheel? It's a little bit easier to find something that's sort of what you're looking for and edit it rather than create something from scratch. So say this um, tree here, you like the general idea of the tree, but you're not so happy with the base or maybe some of the leaf shapes. So that I'm gonna choose this and then I'm going to touch my edit button. <clears throat> And I'll have a new screen. Let's make this, uh, this is a good size screen. Then I'm going to turn off fill because I really just am going to want the uh, outline. And I'm going to make the outline a little bit bolder. Then down here is where all the action is as far as editing. We have these different boxes. And of course, all these boxes, if you hover over them, you'll get uh, some context information. It'll tell you what it does. So. Um, we're going to be editing points, and we may be adding points, we may be subtracting points. So I'm first going to click on edit, and now you'll see all of these points, and these are, are at, these things sticking out indicate that these are what are called um, Bezier markers, where you can do curves very easily. If I pull this, it makes this really nice change in the curve that is um, very gradual and not... Um, uh, it's very smooth. And that's what these um, things sticking out, these markers will do for you. So having the ability to do these Bezier curves really makes it faster to make curves that are even. But I want to go down here and get rid of this part down here because that doesn't look like a real tree to me. So it looks like I've got a whole bunch of um, points down here, probably more than I need. So I'm going to go over to the uh, delete points to just uh, make this a little simpler down here, get rid of some of these points. And if I wanted to, I could uh, edit this point down here. Now you want to be sure I, I had the um, uh, delete points active. If I wanted to say edit this point, and I leave delete point on and I click on that, that point's going to go away. So you want to make sure that you're in the function you want to be. Like you don't want to think you're going to edit and you're actually in delete points um, because that will get rid of the point. And then you'll have to add the point and just, just be aware of what function you have active. So now I'm going to edit a point and bring this one over here and maybe a little bit further over. Make this tree trunk a little fatter here. And, um, you know, I could go back and change some of these leaves here. Like, I'm not so crazy about this area here. I can make this little sticking out a little bit more so it looks more uniform with the rest of the leaves, something like that. So you can go back and take an existing shape and make it look more, you know, pleasing to what you had in mind. And then when you're happy with it, you actually just close out. And there it is in your word sculpt wizard. So that you can go ahead and next, choose your words. You know, could put tree. Oh, most of you are probably familiar with this. So I'm going to do this very quickly. Um, tree, oak, leaf, um, acorn, uh, maple. So you, you choose your words and it's going to populate all of those words inside of your shape. And you have a choice if you want it to all be 
uppercase or you want upper and lower, um, the sizes, the font sizes, if you want it all be a one font, um, if you want them to be random or if you want them to all be vertical for some reason or um, horizontal. The horizontal is kind of nice because you could, um, let's go back, say you wanted to make this a um, invitation to something or other like um, barbecue since it's a tree. I can spell barbecue and you've got any word that any separate words you want them to have um, a comma after them so that they if you have say if you want two words together like cookout you wouldn't put a comma between cook and out but for barbecue when you go to start the next word you need a comma there so barbecue um, June 3rd um, nine o'clock and if I put use words only once, then I'm going to have my words over here and then I can go to finish and I can move these words around. Well, I've got to ungroup them. So this has all of the uh, different parts grouped together and there's the group symbol. If I ungroup, then I can click on the word and then move it to wherever I want it to be. So certainly I would put more information here, but this usage for the word scope wizard, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you're going to use to um, fill up totally in the typical word scope type of project. You can take advantage of these shapes and do different things with them that are not full of words. It's just, an, you know, it's a really, it's a pretty big library of shapes that you can utilize in different ways. Okay, so that's Word Sculpt, and I'm just going to pop back and see if I have any questions, because I cannot see them when I'm in this screen. And, okay, no questions, so I'm going to go back to my... program here. And we don't need to save these changes. And that's a pretty good hoop size. So uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the spiral wizard. So the wizards are not in the silver version. So um, and I'm not sure about the gold version. I think the spiral version, um, I'm gonna have to check. So let's go back into gold. I did look this stuff up yesterday, but I'm just not sure right off the top of my head about the spiral wizard. <clears throat> okay. Yes, we are in the gold version. So it, to get to the all the wizards, you go to create and we have the spiral wizard here, and it looks like it is in the gold version. The spiral wizard is in the um, definitely in the platinum version. It looks like it's in the gold since I'm in the gold version right now. And this is a lot of fun to make a lot of different designs. So it's kind of reminiscent of the spirograph that most of us played with when we were kids. So uh, when you open it up, you're going to have a, a random design right on your screen here. And if you um, are not happy with it, you just click random again. And it's just going to warn you that you're going to lose this one. You click OK, and it'll give you another one. And you can just keep going until you find one that, that interests you. So we've got this one design here. Then there's all these different ways on the right that you can alter that. And you, of course, can hover over them and get an idea of what they do. Like right now, we have 10 petals. Let's make it less petals and see what happens. Uh, I think I liked it better with more. Ah, that's nice. Then we come down here. Those are, here's petal types. Let's increase that number. Made them a little bit more rounded. Curvature, rotation number of lines. Now this will give it more lines. It'll be more dense like that. 
and spacing. Let's change that. So it, it, you can do a lot of really interesting things. And once you are happy with your design, you can even superimpose another design on top. And if you're going to do that, I would generally then change the color. So if I want to make another layer, I would go down to the plus sign here and then go and change my color, say blue. So now I have um, a blue version and a pink version. But I'm going to go to the blue and I'm going to change that version. So let's go over here and make less petals. I'm not happy with that. And let's change this. Let's go back here. I think we're going to need to rotate this. Yeah, let's rotate this a little bit so it offsets it from the pink. Maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. And then uh, once you're happy with it, you click OK. And so now I've got this kind of 2 or 3D effect of having the pink and the blue. And you can definitely, this is not uh, a digitized design yet, so you can definitely make it bigger or smaller. You don't have to worry about um, the um, stitches getting too, too, too small and or too large, either way. So you have this nice design. And um, I'll show you some examples of ways that I've used it. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. And go back here to the screen. And go back to some pictures. So um, this is a table runner where each panel has different spiral designs. The middle one has a bunch of smaller spiral designs that I combined onto the hoop and um, also used the quilt block wizard in the, to quilt the background. So these are a whole bunch of different little um, spiral designs. Then this is a, a nice large one. And also with in the background, I, I brought the spiral design into the quilt block wizard to do the echo quilting around the outside. And then this one on top is different colors because I made the spiral design and then I used um, Inkatense um, fabric pencils, which are um, a really fun project uh, product that you can get at one of the big box stores. And they are colored pencils that when you color on fabric, and you use fabric medium, it becomes permanent and it makes a watercolor effect. And I really like how it, it looks when you add it to these spiral designs. So there's one usage. Then um, this is actually a large holiday um, table runner. And you can see I've got in the, in the center, I have three um, spiral designs in some using some metallic threads to add some bling to this project and some sequins. Then, oh, that was my grandson. And we don't want that one. And hmm, I miss, I thought I had another spiral wizard. So I don't have an, um, another spiral wizard design, but the one, the picture that I thought was in there is um, a technique that I, I like to use the spiral wizard for. And that is, if you have a quilt where you have multiple blocks of the same size, say you want um, to fill in the, uh, you have a quilt where it has squares that are three by three, and there's a whole bunch of them. You can open up the spiral wizard and put the size, say two and a half by two and a half, and make a spiral design, and then place that in each of your three by three blocks to, to quilt it. And it, it makes a, a pretty nice effect. So um, it um, actually, hold on one second and I'll get that for you. I thought I had a picture, but I don't. I can show you the real thing. So it's probably a no-no, leaving the camera uh, without a person in it, but I wanna show you this. So with this quilt, you'll see I have these repetitive blue blocks that are all the same size. So I took it in, took the um, spiral wizard out and made that design. 
so that uh, it would fill each of those blue blocks. Then I put a little flower design in these and then stitched in the ditch and I was done. And um, it makes a nice um, effect on the backside too. You can see the spiral designs on the back. And for the red flowers, instead of using um, white embroidery thread, I use the, the same color as the front so that it, you know, the back, I, I like the way that the back looks. So another usage for the spiral wizard. Now, <clears throat> another um, new function that's in the platinum version since my Sonet came out is the ability for us to be able to make ribbon embroideries. So um, actually, before I go into that, are there any questions on the things that I've covered thus far? Have I gone through things too quickly? Do you want me to go over things a little bit more depth? Um, I would be happy to do that. And if not, I will go on to ribbon embroideries. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again and go back into my sonnet. Okay, so this is the gold version and you'll see I'm in the embellish tab and in the gold version, you can use the, this tab where you can place beads on your project or um, sequins, a, a lot of different decorative items, but the ribbon embroidery icon is grayed out because you can't do the ribbon embroidery designing in gold. And I probably should have mentioned when I brought up the ribbon embroidery is that um, you need to have uh, the ribbon embroidery attachment in order to do the ribbon embroideries that they, you can create with the MySonet software. And um, the ribbon embroidery attachment will fit on the uh, larger machines that have a big throat space. The, um, Icon, the new Icon 2, the Epic, the Epic 2, the Ruby 90, um, the Viking and Foff machines that are the, you know, the, the higher end machines that have the, the large throat space and can accommodate the ribbon embroidery attachment. So now I am in the platinum version again, not gold. And I'm in the embellish tab up here. And now this icon is available for use. And um, so this is if you want to do ribbon embroidery. And there are a variety of ways that you can do ribbon embroidery, um, probably from easiest to what takes a little more skill is I would start with just inserting an already existing design. Like there are a gallery of designs in here that you can choose to make um, ribbon embroideries from so that you don't have to create anything. You can just add it to your project. Um, I actually, I should have pulled it out. I have a pillow that I use this cat um, design on and act, uh, made it into an applique, and, which you can do with these ribbon embroideries. And um, it looks pretty cute. Um, but there are a bunch of designs here that are can be used for a lot of different purposes. So say I wanted to do a heart. I mean, this is kind of a nice design. I'd click on that, click on open, and close. And now I have two hearts. I got to get rid of one. So here's my um, ribbon embroidery. It has the green uh, corners so that you know you can make it quite large and it will, the number of stitches will increase. So you can make it whatever size you want. There is a new square here, this green outline. That is an indication of how large you can make your ribbon embroidery. Um, the, because of the size of the attachment, you cannot Im Im make a ribbon embroidery from one side of the, the hoop to the other. There's just a, um, a space uh, limitation. And so you have to keep your designs within this green box. So that's uh, one of the designs that you can make very quickly because it's already in your um, software. Let's make that a little smaller there. Then the next more um, 
probably creative uh, and maybe a little bit harder way to make your ribbon embroideries is to use shapes. So we have this library of shapes where you can make all, all sorts of things by combining these shapes. So um, let's start with say the star. So I pick my shape and then I click on place shape. And the first thing you'll get is this ribbon selection window. I almost always will change it to the smallest ribbon because otherwise, um, because I want, in general, I want my ribbons to be very close to each other. I don't want big gaps. So I like to choose a small ribbon size. That doesn't mean that I necessarily have to use 5.0 millimeter ribbon. Um, but I just feel like I can get a better design by having the ribbon smaller because I like my curly cues close together. And then I could change the color to the color of ribbon I'm going to use. Then I click OK. So I've got that star. I'm going to get rid of the heart right now because I'm going to build on this. So I have this um, star now. I could go back in and choose a larger star. And this time maybe go for purple and make it a little bit bigger. And then I could go in and maybe I just want to circle around it. And a teal, maybe. That's not too bad. Let's go back to purple. See, as I'm playing with it, I'm, you know, I'm kind of changing my idea what I was going to do because now I think this circle looks better on the inside than it would outside. So that's something you can do with the place shape function. Now I'm going to. Um, Click on the top one and hold down the, the um, shift key. And so I select all of these in, on the film strip, then right click and delete all of them and show you how you can make your own um, original design that's not one of these shapes. You go to draw a line and you have two methods. You have the point to point and then you have a freehand line. Freehand line, I think, probably would work best if you have um, some sort of ability to use a, a digital pen rather than a mouse or a trackpad. Um, I'll show you what I mean. I, um, you also want to have a little bit of artistic ability. I um, don't really have much, but and using a mouse even less. But you'll see how you can uh, draw uh, a ribbon embroidery by uh, me doing it poorly. So I'm going to push down the left mouse key and hold it down and try to draw a leaf. Well, that's not too good. I didn't mean to make that last part so large. So there's my leaf. Once I let go of that left mouse key, it becomes a ribbon embroidery. Like I said, much better if you had something with a, a stylus or a pen. So we're going to delete that. If I were going to, with the um, use the mouse, rather than use the drawing a, oh, I, you know what? It's not deleting because I have not finished the function. I need to right click to finish placing the line. And now I can right click and delete. So if I were using a, a mouse or a trackpad to draw something, instead of using freehand line, I'd use point line. And you'll see what I mean. With point line, you can correct your where you are not getting the, the shape that you ideally want. You can go back and correct. It's a lot more forgiving. It does take a little bit longer. And I can go back now and I can click on any of these dots and make it be much more um, appealing to me. So it's like I said, it's much more forgiving so that you can get, you know, the actual shape that you had in your mind instead of something that looks like a five year old. 
through, through it or actually my when my kids were five years old they probably drew better leaves than i did <clears throat> just now and then when i'm happy with it which i would fuss with this a bit more but when i'm done i fussing i would right click and there's my leaf so you can make your own um designs on the fly for the ribbon embroidery and one of the things that i actually like to do is combine the ribbon with the spiral wizard so i'll show you what i mean and i'm going to just get rid of this delete then i got to finish placing my line before i can delete and i'm going to go back up into create and grab um, a spiral design so let's choose maybe a different color we've been working with this pink for a while. Let's choose maybe a purple. So we've got a purple and I'm just going to play with this a little bit to see where we, that looks pretty nice right out of the gate. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm happy with that. I'm going to click okay. And I have um, this nice spiral design. Then I can go into embellish and grab um, a shape to sit, fit into the center of that spiral design. So I'd go in and get something like this and place my shape. And let's go with maybe a light purple. <clears throat> and I think that fits rather nicely. I might want it to be a different color. So I'm gonna go into property, and not properties. I'm gonna go over here and now we'll, we'll leave it as is. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to choose another um, ribbon design to go around the outside. <clears throat> so I'm going to go in and choose this design, place that. So I chose my design, then I clicked on place shape and change the color. And put that by stretching it, stretching the corners. I'm not real crazy about that shape. I'm, I'm going to actually take get something that's not so spiky because these two shapes have more um, softer uh, points and I'm not liking the spiky on the edges. So let's go back in and get something softer, like maybe this. So the film strip on the right is a really great thing to have because whenever you want to quickly grab a part of the design and they may be very close to each other, you just click on the film strip and it will select that design so that you can manipulate that design. <clears throat> so I'm a little happier with that. I might even go in and um, make another spiral design and put that around the um, that have it stick out the sides and have it have change it so that it it stitches out first and everything else lays on top of that and i think well we might as well we have time i might as well go and do that so i'm going to go back to create go into spiral and let's see what we can create here it's kind of nice but let's make it a different color and blue Okay, so we have this. I'm going to make this a lot bigger. Because now it just looks like a bird's nest. And I'm going to move that up so that stitches out first and everything else lays on top of it. And maybe, maybe it wasn't the right spiral design, but you get my drift here, I think that by adding these two types of designs together, you, you know, the, the parts are, the sum of the, the sum of the parts is, what is that saying? The, something about the, 
the sum is greater than the number of parts, and I'm butchering it, but I think the, at, the adding the spiral designs with the ribbon designs, really, you can get a really nice end product. So now I need to see if anybody has questions. So I have to stop sharing to go back to that screen. Um, okay, any tip, uh, we've got a couple of questions. Um, so somebody said that your quilt is very pretty. The spiral design really stands out. I like the red flowers on the back. Thank you. I, I do too. <laughs> I think that it um, really added something to the quilt. Actually, I, I, I want to say one other thing about this quilt. It's totally off the my sew net topic, but in um, when I do quilting, I um, love uh, piping. I, I put piping on almost everything I sew. And this piping is a little unusual in that I use the beading foot and a string of beads inside instead of cording and a um, um, blanket stitch with the dark blue thread. So it adds, it kind of uh, plays off of the stripey binding. And I think that that adds something to the quilt as well. Bring it up real close. So this was a fun little um, quilt to make. Not, um, not a lot of my sonnet techniques on there, but just thought I would bring that up. Okay, now we have another question here. Uh, any tips for digitizing using felting needles? Um, when, you, when, you're digitize, when you digitize things for felting, there has to be, you know, I would use the felting um, techniques in the software but there has to be a lot of uh, very close together um, stitches. If you're, for some reason, you want to try out another technique, like what, what I'm thinking is, so I have sometimes used cut work designs for felting. So it may be that if you're, you, you, could tr uh, you could play around with trying to use cut work functions and see what you get with the felting. Um, it, there just has to be an intense number of um, stitches in one general area to make you know, the felting happen, basically. So um, that's about the only tip that I have that, you know, you want your, um, there, there's got to be so many times that that needle, needle punches in order to make a nice design. Um, how to make a shaped dog body to use in word sculpt? Well, there are already dogs in there. Um, so um, I'm going to answer a couple more questions and we'll come back to the dog body question. Um, somebody asked, can you use a Bezier tool here? Um, not sure where here was. Um, if that was what you, I don't think you could use it when you're doing um, the um, spiral tool or the ribbon embroidery. Um, it is in digitizing that you, you generally use the Bezier tool to create shapes. And um, there's a question, how did you move the last design to the top? Okay, I'll go back. I'll answer that in the dog body question. So I'm going to go back to share my screen. Okay, so I'm just going to add a couple of designs here to show you how I would move things up. Um, say I wanted uh, this hippo to be really big and have a little bird, the bird sitting on him. So I have to have, I might, I would want to stitch out the hippo first. Over in the thumb strip on the left, I would click on the hippo and then go down here to this up arrow and click until I moved it to where I wanted it to stitch out in the, in the order I wanted things to stitch out. So pretty simple. <clears throat> so let's get rid of this. And my cat's jumping on my lap again. Have to, she's like an escape artist. I don't know how she got out where I locked her up. Okay, so the other question was word sculpt and making a dog. So I need to go into create. And then word sculpt. Then when we look at our shapes, I'd be really surprised if there weren't dogs in here already because there's so many different animals. Yes, we have dogs and cats. 
So we have these different dog shapes. You know, we have like the dachshund and we have more like a husky, more like a little boxer. And, you know, certainly if you could choose, oh, I'm in the gold version, so I can't um, edit him. But if I were in the platinum version, this would not be grayed out. And I could go and say you have a boxer. I don't um, this is probably not a boxer, actually. It's one of the, um, uh, maybe a pug. But if you wanted to make him into a boxer, you could um, edit the points. So let me go into um, the platinum version to review that since we have time. Um, let's see if we have any other questions before I do that. Nope, no more questions. So I'm going to go back. Can you create ribbon design? I have one, a question here, so just bear with me with this weird screen. Can you create ribbon designer in the MySoNet software? I'm not quite sure what that question means. If you could elaborate on your question so I have a better idea of what you're talking about. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm back in the Platinum version, and I'm going to go back to um, WordSculpt so we can change that dog face. So if we go back up, oh, I'm still in, I'm still in gold because I, this is, this icon is grayed out. So we got to get rid of that. That's the downside of going into these other functions to demo the different levels because then they kind of look alike. Let's get rid of these. And go back into doing word sculpt. And now we should be good. Yes, now we have our icons back and we can go and grab the dog. Okay, so we have this dog here, but it's not quite like your dog. You go into edit, make this a little bit bigger. And I'd get rid of the fill. I'd make the outline a little bit bolder. Then I'd go to here to edit points. And then I can work on pulling the jaw out to look more like your dog. Now I'm going off the screen here, but you get the idea how you could make it customized for the shape of the dog that you, know, you have or the person who this might be a gift for and you know, maybe they have an older dog that's a little chubby and um, so you can see how by pulling these points you can make the shape completely different so i'm going to add a point here because i don't want him to have a big butt i want him to have a long tail And I added, I kept clicking when I was adding points. So I have too many points that I have to, have to get rid of some of them. Now that's better. Now I want to go back to edit points. Then I'll pull that point in to make a tail, maybe a little bit longer. Maybe not quite that long and spiky. So you can see how you could edit it to, you know, make it very personalized. So it'd be just like your dog uh, rather than the, the stock dog that came with the program. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back and see if there's any questions. Um, so whoever wanted to know about ribbon designs in the MySonet software um, didn't, um, elaborate on what that meant. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but I'll, I'll try to guess since you didn't elaborate. Um, these ribbon designs that we I, I demoed are for, oh, ribbon embroidery designs. Yeah, that's what I was demoing. In the ribbon, it, if you go into the embellish tab and you make those ribbon designs, those colored areas where it was five millimeters wide, those were all ribbon embroidery designs. That's what those are. The, um, there was the spiral designs that were that looked like a, a single stitch. Then there were the wide um, look like ribbon on the screen. Those were ribbon embroidery designs. And there's that you have that function to make your own ribbon embroideries 
in my in the MySonet software. And um, another question, if you delete a point you didn't want to, can you undo it with the back arrow? Yes, you can undo it with the back arrow as long as you haven't, you know, gone, you know, five steps forward that you don't want to undo. But yeah, you could do that. Or you can just click on um, add a point and put it where you want it. You know, it's pretty simple. You know, if you make a mistake, you can you can back out of it pretty easily. And um, so it's um, it's a fun thing to do to to um, customize those word sculpts. Um, not not hard. Okay, so we're at four o'clock. Um, any last questions? I will let you know that I generally check the Facebook comments for about a week after a Facebook Live. So if you uh, are watching this later after the event and you have a question, feel free to ask it because I will be monitoring for about a week. Generally, if the when the video is going to get watched, it's usually um, within the first week. And after uh, the um, uh, after this uh, Facebook Live is processed, the, it will be put on YouTube as well. I think it's, sometimes it's easier to find these things on YouTube than it is on Facebook, but same content both places. So thanks again for joining me today. MySonet is so much fun to play with. Um, I think the MySonet version is easier to use than Premiere Plus 2 and Premiere. I loved Premiere and Premiere Plus 2. But I uh, really feel like the MySonet has some really fun features, and I think it's integrated better, and I just think it's easier to use. Not easy if you want to take on the full functionality. I mean, there's so many things you can do with MySonet, but um, certainly easier, and you learn a little piece, and you um, build from there. So I'm so glad that you joined me. Let's see, I think another question pop, uh, popped up. Uh, can you save designs created to a flash drive for the Jade machines? Yes, you can. I believe Jade, you you need to save it in a format, maybe um, either the um, HUS or VIP format. You'd have to save it when you go to export it. There, there's a drop down menu on the export uh, dialog box that has all the different formats. So you'd have to pick the format that your Jade will read. So you pick that format and you export it, and um, then you can use it on the Jade. Um, I haven't sewn on the Jade in a long time, so I don't remember the embroidery format that it likes. And um, OK, the next question, can you keep designs that you create in the software? Yes, there is a lot of confusion about that, because we have the library, which is the library, um, the MySonet library, which is over 7,000 designs that's a subscription service that you can download. If you have the subscription, you can download designs 24 seven, but when you don't have the active subscription, you cannot use those designs. That's the library designs. Unless you purchase them, you can purchase them individual designs. But say you have, you have the silver um, version of the software, you get the library free with it or the platinum version or the gold, so the subscription version. You get the library free. You don't get it with the boxed version. So you say you have the silver version and for a year, because you have a subscription, all of those designs that you have utilized from the library will be on your computer. But when your subscription lapses, you cannot use those library uh, designs. It's just like Netflix. You can download uh, stuff off of Netflix and you can watch it as much as you want on your computer. But if your Netflix subscription lapses, you can't watch them anymore. Same thing. However, if you have that same silver subscription of the software, you don't use a library design, and you create your own design out of you know out of your imagination, that is yours forever, whether you have the the software or not. You know your creation is yours. Library designs are only yours while you have an active subscription. So hopefully that um, settled that. And Meredith, one of our people monitoring and helping me from afar, says VP3 and VIP and HUS. So I think those are probably the formats that the Jade likes. Um, but I'm sure if you're a Jade own owner, you know what format your, your machine uh, wants for it, the design files. 
Um, I think that those are all the questions. And again, thank you so much for joining me. I realize everybody has so many competing demands on their time now, and that um, it's a compliment that you decided to join me today. So thank you very much. Have lots of fun with the software and happy sewing.